I came to Deep Springs when I was 16, and I wanted to get out of high school, and I didn't want to go to some place that seemed to me to be uh, four years of a glorified high school, essentially. Deep Springs struck me as a very real alternative. I didn't realize at the time uh, just how good an alternative I had chosen. From the very first day, I was put to work. I had to get my act together, uh, start the reading and everything else, and uh, I haven't really looked back since. I didn't know exactly what my reasons for wanting to come to Deep Springs were. It was mostly intuition. I just knew that I had to be here. And when I got in, there was, there was no question where I was going to college. I had been accepted at a variety of Ivy League schools and very good, normal institutions, but there was no question. There was nothing like Deep Springs and where else I was applying. What happens here as they are exposed to the physical world of work, as they are challenged by the incredibly rigorous academics that are here, as they learn to be responsible not only for themselves but for other members of the community, it makes an addition to the basic value and basic skill of that human being. And you just see it all the time. Every, every place you look, every alumnus uh, that you uh, encounter, you, you can almost say, that student is a Deep Spring student. The real key to the intensity and the excellence of the academic program is it's simple, uh, it's a simple factor of its size. It's a very small program. We have four or five students in many classes. And one can't get lost there. One can't slip into the last row and take notes. If one hasn't done one's reading, everyone knows it, not only one's classmates, but also I, the teacher, uh, find out pretty readily. And that aspect of having to participate, uh, having to come with ideas prepared and ready, uh, that is extremely valuable. Uh, that's, that's a kind of educational experience that can transfer quite readily uh, to any, any arena outside of Deep Springs. And um, he starts the next, the next section of, um, of the repressive hypothesis, which is called the perverse implantation, uh, asking, well, why, why is there this discourse of sex? What, what is the social function of it? Um, Actually coming to Deep Springs and being a student is a lot more intense, much more rigorous, and much harder an experience than I thought it would be. Um, in the brochure, they don't tell you how little sleep you, you will get as a student. In the brochure, they, they, they don't tell you how, 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 how difficult the academics are. Everything is far more rigorous, far more intense, and far more difficult than I ever thought it, it could be. Having spent uh, four different segments of my life at Deep Springs, uh, as a student in the 1950s, as a faculty member in the 1960s, as a member of the board in the 1980s and early 1990s, and uh, now coming back to Deep Springs as president, um, I suppose I have some insights that uh, are at least somewhat uh, unique. And the one thing I can conclude absolutely from this is that Deep Springs is what they now call a learning community a community in which everybody is a teacher and everybody is a learner perpetually. So it's not that domination starts and figures out all the details. It's that the details have a life of their own. And they have a particular kind of discourse. They have other reasons for occurring. I've taught at Brown University and at the University of Oxford in England. And my permanent, my, my regular post now is at Oxford. And I find that the caliber of students here is oftentimes uh, at least as good as the caliber of students there. However, here there's a level of enthusiasm that's very difficult to find at a place like Brown or Oxford. And that, to me, is what makes Deep Spring students particularly unique and what makes it such a useful pedagogical experience for me. Uh, the other places I teach, I teach there because it's a sort of job and it allows one to do one's own research. 
here it's a, it's a real pleasure to teach. I really love t teaching the students here. They're much more engaged, much more active in, in the classroom, and uh, they're much more responsible in terms of taking charge for, of their own learning. The fascinating thing about the curriculum here is this kind of negotiation or discussion that goes on about a course before it's ever even taught. So that uh, when a faculty member and the, and, this, and the students get together for the first time, there's already been a, a bonding, a connection, a, an expression of interest and a shaping of that course that doesn't exist at most institutions that I, I know anything at all about. And it's one of the reasons why I think we have such good courses here, because, again, this interest, this discussion, this, this sharing of ideas that exists all throughout the curriculum, throughout the entire passage and life of the course. I especially enjoy the close interpersonal contact with students here. My class at the present time has eight students in it, and this arrangement provides not only an opportunity to present information also, but also to discuss it and stop at any time to answer questions or help students answer their own questions. I found the students generally um, very bright, um, very eager to spend as much time as they can, um, given all their duties that they have to do here um, on the work at hand. So that's been pretty satisfying for me as a teacher as well. I also feel very strongly about the type of education that's being taught here or the system where it's a combination of academics and labor and uh, a self-governance thing. I, I feel that one of the things that's lacking in education today is, is, is that kind of balance. One of the things that, you know, is coming here as, as someone that's wanting to go in the science field, you find that it, at first it's sort of a, um, a scary thing to do because there's really not that much research equipment. Um, there's not that many lab uh, facilities. But I think what you'll find is that there's probably a better chance um, coming here to work on, um, on science in, in a real sense. Uh, a lot of people since they've gotten here that have been interested in science have worked with our science faculty. And um, that's one of the things I was really interested in doing is coming here and actually doing research instead of just simply doing um, the big lecture halls. I uh, last year participated um, in an independent research project with Joe Suzak, who is one of our science faculty here. He um, is a, um, an animal physiologist and does a lot of work with bats, especially bat respiration. Although we don't have a lot of offerings, what we do have here is that students that come in their first and second year and get involved directly in original research programs. And that's not something they can often do until they're in their upperclassmen years at many larger universities. Right now I'm working on a project with Jared Millman, a student here, in which we're looking at actually some of the uh, neuroscience of the physiological control and seeing how the different receptors are integrated in the brain and brought together. And in doing that, we're using one of Jared's favorite topics, which is uh, chaos mathematics. The so bat's in the black box there, and the reason he's in the water is so that we can control his temperature. When he enters the state of tor physiological torpor, his body temperature is whatever we set the ambient temperature or the water temperature that he's in. It's not, he, he actually likes being in that black box. The reason we use this type of bed is they um, naturally roost in crevices. So we put them in this little teeny black box and after being in there a couple times, they actually crawl right into it on their own. What we're doing right now is passing different concentrations of oxygen and carbon dioxide through to measure his ventilatory response and compare that to control conditions on the same bat and a, and a group which we're doing. This bat has just spent the last six weeks up at a high altitude station on the White Mountain Research Station at an elevation of 12 and a half thousand feet. And one of our, our Deep Spring students actually stayed up there with him for that period and flew him every day to actively acclimatize him to that elevation. We have a library of about 25,000 volumes and if there is something you need that is not um, found in our library, you can um, order it through the University of California system. And um, 25,000 volumes isn't that small for a school of about 26 students. It's almost 1,000 volumes for every student.
Deep Springs has uh, what would be considered a typical high desert uh, cattle operation. Uh, we run about 300 cows on primarily public land, but Deep Springs owns about 2,000 acres, uh, some of which is in pasture, uh, 160 acres of which is in alfalfa. We raise all of our own alfalfa. With any luck, each year we raise some extra to sell. From that 300 cows, we try to sell about, oh, uh, we have about 230 calves. We save about 50 heifers to replace cows in our herd, and we sell the rest uh, through normal beef cattle markets. Time and time again, I've seen students who came here feeling that the labor program was something that they might put up with for the sake of having the rest of this experience. But during the course of their time at Deep Springs found that the self-discipline and the self-reliance that was developed in the labor program translated into other areas of their life, particularly the academics, and caused them to be able to perform better there. Sort of the set of qualities that Deep Springs um, often imparts to its, uh, its students, which, which may be more, most useful in a really general sense, is um, a sense of self-reliance and um, independence. I think just about everyone who comes here runs into areas of work, um, whether in academics or labor, um, in which they have really no previous experience and no training. And in that situation, people make a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes, but you also end up succeeding at things you just never even imagined yourself attempting before you came here. The labor program, like everything else in the brochure, I think has a little too much of a Hollywood sheen. You get here and come to realize that ranch work doesn't have such a glossy majesty as is depicted in the brochure. Uh, you also come to realize that four hours of hard work are four hours of hard work. Um, it's, t time moves in a different way when you're digging sludge out of an irrigation ditch. But there are also ways in which it augments spiritual growth that you don't even consider when you read about the labor program in the Deep Springs College of Brochure. I was a student here from 1982 to 84, and I've taught here various times over the last four years. The labor program was a very valuable aspect of the place for me as a student. The best labor experience I think I had was, uh, was perhaps being feed man. It's a very good job. One's on the ranch every day. You see the sunrise, you see the sunset, and it's nice physical labor, and you're taking care of the animals. There's nothing to really beat that. What is unique about the Deep Springs educational program insofar as the labor is concerned is that it is positively authentic. At Deep Springs, the total authenticity of the work is what matters, is what makes it so different. There is no job at Deep Springs that doesn't have to be done. There is no job that a student does at Deep Springs that if it's not done right does not negatively affect the entire community. We see how we affect each other here and that's, that's the power of the experience. Another thing that I think happens here is that students learn to not hold in awe things that they at least initially don't understand. They develop a certain kind of confidence that if they can get into something, if they can take it apart literally or figuratively, they can put it back together again and make it work. And I think that kind of confidence translates into embracing, grasping, dealing with new ideas as well as things that they don't understand. In a lot of ways, uh, the changes I think that, that are um, affected in you through the labor program are, are subtle and, um, and sort of take a long time to sort of you get the perspective to look back and say, you know, exactly what you've gained. And with the position I'm on right now, which is the mechanics assistant, I've um, sort of come like, you know, one step closer to, to what, um, what I actually, you know, live in. I've you know, sort of lost the fear of uh, something breaking and, and just sort of um, stepping back and calling a professional in to fix it. 
you know, I've gotten to where the point, um, to the point where I can sort of walk up to something that's broken and uh, look at it or try to figure out what's going on with it. Um, and that may be, um, may be part of it too, sort of remove the alienation that, that sometimes is felt between oneself and, and uh, sort of the, the tools or the, the um, environment that you find yourself in. Every Deep Springs student is expected to labor at least 20 hours a week here. Many people upon hearing this make the assumption that the labor program is a way in which students can uh, compensate for their full ride scholarship here. This is not the case, however. The labor program is considered an integral and definitive aspect of the Deep Springs education. Our founder, L.L. Nunn, was frustrated by young men's inability to blend the abstract and practical worlds of various kinds of knowledge. So we set up a school in which young men could both learn abstract and practical things. The Hydro Project um, was built to take advantage of the water in Wyman Creek that we bring to the college for irrigation purposes. A lot of people feel that the Hydro Project for Deep Springs was a particularly appropriate thing to do because L.L. Nunn, the founder of the college, was in the electric business himself. Built the uh, first AC generating plant west of the Mississippi River in Telluride, Colorado, and then subsequently went on to develop hydroelectric power in several western states. Uh, and his first educational enterprise, in fact, began in a hydro plant in Utah. So uh, building the hydro plant here seem particularly appropriate. When Deep Springs was founded, the charter, the deed of trust that was set up by L.L. Uh, Nunn made an interesting point that the students of Deep Springs were the beneficial owners of the college. And there's been a lot of discussion over the years as to exactly what that means. There is little discussion over a couple of the other points that were also in the deed of trust and that is that the students were to be responsible for their own behavior, for their own governance. One of the principal pillars that Deep Springs rests on is this notion of student self-governance. There's no alienation from the administration at Deep Springs because the students are the administration. Every student at Deep Springs is part of the student body, which is somewhat of a political body. We meet every Friday night when all our friends at other colleges are going to parties, we're sitting in a room together um, devising our, our own rules. We um, discuss motions um, and discuss rules regarding um, the administration of Deep Springs, the administration of the student body itself, but also of um, what else goes on here in terms of applications, curriculum, um, re-invitations, etc. And then we also um, discuss rules regarding community conduct. Just answer the phone in, in some sort of um, proper fashion, whatever you deem to be proper. Like don't, like, uh, and also recognize the difference between um, phone calls that are, that are local and phone, like just on the ranch and phone calls that are um, coming in from the outside. It's a double ring if it's on the ranch and it's just um, one ring, like a normal phone at home um, when, when it's coming from the outside. Student self-governance here is not just governing their own affairs, but student governance is uh, involved in every aspect of the life of the college. In the Deep Springs, students uh, start right off by assuming that anything that has to do with the life of the college, or life here in the Valley, is something in which they need to be involved, to participate, to help make the decisions. Student government takes a great deal of energy on the part of the students. and. It's energy well spent. It's a very important responsibility. It's not a kind of farce that students go through pretending to have authority. It's very real authority. Can so, would somebody else, it's not a cattle drive for eight hours in the morning. There's a need for somebody to do cowboy work in the morning with Jason. Or can, no, I, me and her. Yeah, but can somebody do it for Brett so he can cook in the afternoon? Well, I could, but I've done it a bunch of times. Could you cook, Jared? When does this be back in time for lunch? You'll be back probably in time for breakfast. Student body government, I think, is is probably one of the, the most crucial aspects of Deep Springs, and I think probably one of the hardest for for the people here 
being able to have some sort of agency in, in, uh, in your own life and your own academic life, um, helping to make decisions that, that um, matter on an institutional level, I think is something that's really appealing to a lot of us. And uh, I know I certainly was interested in coming here for that. They do have the primary say in choosing courses, selecting faculty, selecting incoming students, and many other issues of, of uh, quotidian importance here. It is not some other administrative body that chooses who will be in the next Deep Spring student body. It's, it's actually the students who will choose their classmates. And so, so, so one of the ideas I was thinking of was, was make a, a much more detailed um, evaluation sheet so people would have much more of a clue of what their, you know, much more of a concrete basis on which to judge those applications which they're reading. It seems one of the ways that, 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 that you, most, you most directly affect the future of the college in that, in that you, I mean, you're assigning the exact people who you're going to live with for the next year as well as the people that will carry on um, you know, Deep Springs into the future. No matter what decision is made, you have to live with the people that come. And, and, um, and I think that not only was there a satisfaction, you know, a really great satisfaction, after deciding you know, the final 14 people and calling them and saying, hey, you want to come live at Deep Springs? And that was just really great you know, to, to you know, see their reactions. It's also, I mean, probably, probably even, even, um, even more heartening to, to really live with them this year and, and see them settled in and see them exploring the place and, and finding you know, what, what they want to get out of it and seeing them think about the same things you thought about last year. I mean, it's really just been you know, just a fabulous experience and you know, that's why I'm, I'm pretty much looking forward to being, the, the, you know, being involved in that same process this year. I think what makes Deep Springs such a, both a different place and, and a very positive, you know, good, different in a very positive way, is 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 the community that exists here. And in a way, I mean, people people oftentimes talk about the three pillars of Deep Springs being academic, self-governance, and, and labor. But at least the way I like to think of it is that the community is almost the foundation for those three pillars. Dinner and meal times are really community times, and it's a time in which we can gather around the table and at the end of the day or in the beginning of the day. Some of the best conversations I've had at Deep Springs have existed around the dinner table. I've never laughed so, so hard as I have um, around the Deep Springs dinner table. So not only is mealtime fantastic because the food is fantastic, but it's also um, a real community time and something that can be a lot of fun. And mealtime makes Deep Springs feel like home. In the long run, actually, um, the friendships that can be formed here and that are formed here and that, that I formed here have um, some really significant impact on your life. I think it's uh, one of the, the crucial parts of, of being here, you know. The friends that you, you make here, um, you work with them, you uh, talk with them, you study with them, you do almost all aspects of your life together and you get to know them know them in a very intense way, in a very real way. It's probably going to be very few people that I know, and maybe no people that I know quite as holistically as I, as I do know them at Deep Springs. We have nine trustees, one of whom is a student trustee, but uh, an alumnus uh, made a comment the other day with regard to alumni and trustees. He said, do you think you have only nine trustees? That's not right. You have about 700 trustees. Uh, because every alumni, every alumnus who has been here, uh, because they were involved in student governance, because they were involved in um, helping to build the physical walls or the, sh or the structures that are here, feel very closely in, uh, about this place, feel very strongly about this place. Because of the intense community, because of the active student involvement, because of the, the total experience that is Deep Springs. Every alumnus who comes through here, I think, is, is probably permanently imprinted in, in some way with the effects of this place on them. The valley is beautiful. I mean, the thing that's amazing to me is that Deep Springs is here. You come out over the West Guard Pass down into the valley, and it's just this huge open space. It's wide and very brown and surrounded by these beautiful mountains on both sides. And then there's this little patch of green that you see way in the distance. And 
and that's Deep Springs, and it, it's, it just feels like an oasis out here. I've done a little bit of hiking around the area, and you can get up onto the surrounding mountains here and see over to the Sierras, and you can see the Sierras from the college, too. The sheer physical beauty of the surroundings are very important in terms of personal growth here, uh, at least for some students every year. That becomes a, a, an intensely valuable factor in learning to contemplate and learning to step back from the things they're learning, uh, learning to take not exactly time out, but a time where they can uh, look into themselves and uh, consolidate the things they're learning. And so an important part of the experience at Deep Springs is actually discovering who you are in relation to the physical world. And so encountering this, this really strange kind of alien physical world and coming to deal with it and learning that you can pretty much exist in it, survive in it, and, and excel in it is, is, a, is an amazing part, I think, of again what Deep Springs is about. I remember when I first got here as an applicant and uh, really saw the place. I had sort of, you know, built up this image in my mind, but um, there really wasn't anything like, anything that would really pr prepare me for what I was going to be coming into. It was, you know, a real sort of surprise to walk out and, and find yourself in the middle of this valley. I think that's also really important in, in my decision to come here. It's one of the great opportunities in life. It's something that a student would be crazy to pass up. Any other university, any other institution of learning just can't offer the sort of learning experience that Deep Springs can offer. Uh, it's academically excellent and much else besides that you simply cannot get at any other university.